Hello everyone and welcome back, this is Laura and as you can see from the title, today I'm going to be sharing with you 10 cards one kit using the Gina K Stamp TV Fruit of the Season card kit. So let's dig right into card number one. So for this card I'm going to be creating a 10 bar card which is a size that I don't usually work with but I've been meaning to for quite a while and I thought that this stamp set was the perfect opportunity. So I've cut down my different layers and here I'm going to be working on my white panel and stamping down some of these beautiful snowflakes. So I'm using my Misty here just to help me out so I can stamp a couple of these at the same time and I'm just laying them down exactly where I want them on my pre-cut card and then when I'm happy with the positioning I'll go ahead and pick all of those up with the lid of the Misty. You don't have to use the Misty to do this but I find that it is easy to be able to stamp everything all at once as long as you keep your magnets clean which I didn't. You can see I'm just rubbing off some black ink there. And then I'll go ahead and ink everything up with my Turquoise C Gina K Ink Cube. So this was actually my first time using any of the Gina K inks and I was really impressed with how well it stamped with just one pass. Sometimes I think with mini ink cubes you can kind of miss spots more easily than when you're using full size ink pads but I was really impressed with how this transferred and you get some really beautiful colour right from the off. So I'm just going to go ahead and turn this piece around and you'll see that I'm using my Misty Creative Corners just to help me make sure that I can line this piece up exactly where I want it each time in case I do make a mistake with my stamping, which is more common when you're stamping multiple images in one go. As I mentioned, you don't need to do use the Misty to recreate this look. You could just go ahead and use a stamp block and it would work exactly the same. So again, once I'm happy with how I've got everything lined up, You'll see that one disadvantage of using the Misty is that you tend to spend long, longer fussing over the placement of everything. I'll go ahead and reline that up using the creative corners, ink this up and stamp it down again. You'll see that after I've stamped this down I've got room for just one more set of stamping in my Misty just to kind of fill what's currently the top left hand corner of this piece and then I'll be able to take it out and just finish off a couple of little areas using a stamp block and some of the smaller snowflakes. So I did mention that this is an unusual card size for me. This is, I believe, called a number 10 size card. And if you're not familiar with that, the dimensions of the finished card are four inches by nine and a quarter inches. And I believe the name comes from the type of envelope that you can buy a standard sized envelope that this will fit into. And I just think that this taller card is a great opportunity to use some more of these beautiful snowflakes all on one card. Next up I'm going to be using my Amalgam Ink Cube which is a brand new ink pad and is super juicy so you can see I did a couple test runs just to get a feel for how much I needed to ink my stamp and how much pressure I needed when I pressed it down. To pull everything together I'm going to use the Gina K Connect Glue and I have a panel here of the Turquoise C cardstock and I've just covered the back of that with Connect Glue and it is slightly smaller than my white card base but slightly larger than my stamped panel so it will create a nice kind of frame around this piece. To separate the stamped panel from the background I'm using some craft foam from my stash and I really like to use craft foam for this because I think it gives a nice even layer of dimension right across the piece and certainly with a large card like this you want to make sure that there are no gaps between the foam where things can kind of sink in and get smushed and crushed, definitely if you're going to be sending this in the post, and then that way everything will arrive looking just as good as when it left your craft room. Finally, I trimmed down my stamped panel piece, and I'll mount that onto another piece of this turquoise C, and then stick that all down flat to the card. You could certainly stop at this point and I think everything looks really beautiful as is, but I do like to have a little bit of sparkle or shine on my cards, especially if it's going to be more of a kind of a wintry or a Christmassy card, then I like to have that little bit of sparkle. So I pulled in some sticky back sequins from my stash and I'm just using my craft knife to pick those up and just place those down in the centre of each of the snowflakes. And I think that adds just enough shine to the background. You could definitely go ahead and cover all of this with a thin coat of Winkle Stella or another kind of sprayable glitter that you may have and I think that would look really nice too. Okay so that is card one finished. So for card two I've masked off a card panel and I'm using the Prickly Pear ink and a Distress Blending tool just to blend that all over the background so I'll have a nice masked off piece in the center of this panel. You'll notice when I come to peel this off I did make a bit of a mistake but I'll show you how I fix that. 
Here I have some gold coloured perfect pearls and while my ink is still wet I'm just pouncing that into the surface of the ink and brushing off any of the excess and off camera I did just spritz a little bit of water over the top of this to help that perfect pearl stick in place. And here as I'm peeling up the background you'll see that I didn't do my masking very evenly so I do go ahead and trim this piece out later on. I've now moved on to stamping some of these gorgeous apples. I love these little apple stamps that were included in this kit. So I stamped those down using red velvet and I've just stamped a third one there as I realised I wanted three for my card. And then I'm using some more of that prickly pear just to add some colour into the centre and then a Spectrum Noir alcohol marker just to colour in that stem. I do have the dies for these but because of how I coloured them, because I did my ink blending, I wanted to fussy cut those so I could have no extra ink on the edges as I would if I used my dies. So now I've got my panel here with the gold perfect pearl and you can see that I've cut that down so it's nice and even all the way around and I've just popped that into my misty so I could stamp my sentiment in the centre towards the top. Again I'll use my connect glue to bring everything together and I'm also going to use another piece of white foam just to add some depth to this piece and allow that panel to rest up off the surface of the card. Had I have got my masking right I wouldn't have done this, this would have been more of a one layer look but since I'd messed up that masking and I trimmed this piece down anyway I decided to take the opportunity to have some more dimension. Now I've got my three apples and I've just lay two of those down with a gap in the centre so I have some idea of how to centre up this third apple and I'm just using my tweezers to help me place everything down and I'm just using that same adhesive to stick the three of those along the bottom. This is quite a simple card but I think it's actually one of my favourites. I think it would be really easy to mass produce and to create many of these. The most difficult part would be maybe the fussy cutting and if you coloured the apples slightly differently you could certainly use the coordinating dies. Just to finish this piece off I added some glossy accents all over the top of the apples and set that in a safe place for it to dry because I am notoriously bad at forgetting that my glossy accents is wet and smudging it all over the card but as you'll see in the still shot at the end it did manage to survive and I haven't smudged it everywhere. Okay, on to card three. I'm going to be using a whole bunch of different inks for this one and also a piece of watercolour card. I decided to use the watercolour card because I was going to be adding an awful lot of ink to this panel and I wanted to make sure that it could hold up to all of that moisture. I'm not doing anything special here, I'm just working my way around using the different colours that I have here on the screen and just using a finger dauber to blend those onto the panel with no particular um, kind of pattern or order and just making sure not to overlap two colours that would make a muddy brown. Once I've got this whole piece covered I've lined up some of those snowflakes in my misty and I'm going to stamp those down using some Versamark ink. Anytime I use Versamark I do also prep my card with some anti-static powder tool and that just make, helps to make sure that any of the embossing powder doesn't stick where I don't want it to, which for this particular card design is very important. <laughs> so once I've got everything stamped, I'll carefully lift that up and add some clear embossing powder. What this is going to do is create a resist element to this piece. Anywhere where that clear embossing powder is, I'll be able to see through to the colours that we've inked onto our base and I'll be able to add another colour over the top to kind of disguise the background. Hopefully that makes sense, but you'll see what I mean in just a moment. Once I've got everything covered in the embossing powder, I'll use my heat tool to set it. And you can see it turns lovely and shiny and glossy just as that heat's applied. And you want to be careful with this not to blow the powder everywhere, you just want to work on one section at a time, and as it melts, move on to the next. So now I have my black ink and my ink blending tool and this is where the magic comes in. I'm going to ink this entire panel quite heavily with the black just to cover up any of that inking that we did and just allow only the snowflakes to show through. Now I'm adding some adhesive to the back of this piece and I'm going to layer it up on a white piece of cardstock and I'm keeping the background of this card quite monochromatic. I think with all the colour that's showing through on those snowflakes which I really love how this turned out. I think you could do this with many different colours. You could have maybe a pastel theme, maybe a complete rainbow, kind of a rainbow wash right across the background. I think there's many opportunities for this kind of a design. And then I'll just add this whole piece onto a black card base. 
to finish this off with my sentiment, I have a small piece of the black card and a small piece of the white. And I'm just going to go ahead and ink up this sentiment here and stamp it down on the white. I love this sentiment. If hogs were snowflakes, I'd send you a blizzard. I just think that's perfect. and I'm so glad that it's included in this stamp set. So once I've got that stamped down, I'll just add some more adhesive to this piece and layer it up on the black. This time I decided to have the length the exact same and the black piece. So rather than having that black poke around all of those edges, you just get a peek of the black at the bottom and the top, and it just helps it to kind of tie in with the background of the card. And I'm just using this to cover up a little bit of mistake with the embossing powder where you can see some of those colors shining through. Okay, on to the next card. This is again, I have to say, one of my favourite cards. I find it difficult to pick a favourite when I do a video like this because I spend a lot of time on each of the cards and I really enjoy creating them and I like the way that they turn out most of the time, but I really love this one. I'm using the white ink. This is a pigment ink, so it does take a little bit longer to dry. You just have to keep that in mind when you're working with it and you can always use a heat tool to help the process along. And I'm stamping this uh, lyric script background stamp onto some prickly pear cardstock. I actually went ahead and stamped this down twice, in part because I'd missed a small section when I was pressing it down, and also to really brighten up and intensify that white. Here I have the partridge stamp, and also the pears, and of course the sentiment, a partridge in a pear tree, which is very difficult not to sing, but trust me, you don't want to hear me singing. <laughs> So I'm going to use a couple different colours here, I've got the prickly pear, oh sorry I don't, that's not true, I've got fresh asparagus for the pears, and then I have a brown ink from my stash for my partridge. So I'll go ahead and press those down, and these stamps are really interesting. You'll notice as you stamp them, rather than just having an outline, it kind of helps you along with the colouring. And I will show you the colouring process, so you can see how I added some colour to these. But because you've got those kind of dots of the colour fading away from the outside edge, it really helps the colouring process. I used some black ink to stamp the sentiment. And then I'm going to go ahead and use my coordinating dies and run this through my die cut machine to cut out both the partridge and the pears. These dies are really easy to line up and I just use a piece of washi tape to hold those in place because I don't want them to shift or move as they're running through my die cut machine and I find that that's the best way to hold them in place. Okay, so once I've popped everything out, it's on to the colouring. For each of these items that I'm colouring today, I'm using my Spectrum Noir alcohol markers, and I've got the caps on screen if you want to follow along and use the same colours. I'm not doing anything fancy with this colouring, and I think it's great that the design of these stamps really helps the colouring look wonderful, even if you just do a basic layer of colour. So I've coloured in the pairs, it was super easy to do this, and then I'm doing a similar super quick and easy colouring on my bird and I just added a couple extra dots of my darker colour just to kind of lend itself towards the design of the colouring here. So now I have a small white panel and I'm going to add the pears and then sit the partridge on top of those just to kind of add a nod to the sentiment and also of course to the 12 days of Christmas song which we all know and hopefully has not got stuck in your head from hearing me uh, read out this sentiment. I know it definitely got stuck in my head as I was working on these cards. I'll go ahead and stick this down onto a panel of prickly pear cardstock which is just fun to say <laughs> so excuse me if I repeat the name over and over again and I'm, I'll try and refrain from doing it just now because I've just kind of let you in on the amusement that this gives me. But I'll add this white panel here onto another piece of cardstock, which you know the colour of by now. So then I'll bring in the base, which has my lyric stamping, and then add my partridge just over in that top right hand corner. I could probably have done with moving this up just a hair because it does ever so slightly overlap with the sentiment, but I don't think it ruins the look of the card at all. But by the time I figured this out, because I went ahead and stuck this piece together um, with some foam, of course, <laughs> I do like to add my dimension. And um, by the time I'd stuck this all together, my Connect glue had dried, so I wasn't able to kind of nudge this piece out of the way. 
So it's at this point I realised and I tried to nudge that piece just slightly out of the way, but it had already dried. If I'd have worked a little bit faster, it wouldn't have been a problem, but I certainly don't think it takes anything away from the card. So for card number five, I wanted to use my wreath builder. As soon as I saw these snowflakes, I knew that I wanted to create a card that looked like this, and I thought the sizing of the snowflakes would be perfect for this piece. If you're not familiar with the Wreath Builder, it is a wonderful tool that was created by Gina Kay and it's helping everybody in the card making world to create perfect wreaths and perfect circular shapes on their cards, which for me is a game changer. It comprises of a stencil here, which you can purchase as a set with two size stencils and I'll have that linked in the description or you can buy a bundle that also comes with a stamp set. But as you can see here, there are many stamps that you would have in your, in your supplies already that you could use this wreath builder template with. You go ahead and cut down a square piece of card. There are certainly ways to use this with a full size note card also, but the easiest way to get going is to create a square that will fit in the centre of this piece. I decided to use the 4 inch design here, and then you just go ahead and add a stamp in place, ink it up, stamp it down, turn and repeat. It's that simple. And you can just keep going and keep going and building this up and you can certainly switch up the colours and switch up the design more frequently than I am, but this was the look that I wanted to go for. And you'll just work your way around, turning the piece and stamping down until your wreath is complete. I hope to also be able to share with you shortly another video using the wreath builder and a little bit more of an in-depth look because I do have the wonderful Gina K or rather Rena K stamp set that Rena K has designed for Gina K and I can't wait to use that. It is the Mandala Maker. So whilst I was waffling about my love for wreaths and the wreath builder, I went ahead and cut two circles of card, one in white and one in mirror and I'm just adding the sentiment, let it snow, which is very difficult also not to sing because each time I read it, I hear let it go and the tune to let it go in my head and it's very difficult not to burst into song. So I've added some adhesive to the mirror board and I'll place that down in the center. And then I will cover this piece in tiny foam squares. These are some of my favorite foam squares to work with when I'm not using pieces of fun foam. And these are the scrapbook adhesive foam squares, and again, I'll have a link to those in the description. So I'll place those down in the centre, and of course, I couldn't, I couldn't let this card be complete without some more gems. So I again just used my craft knife to pick up a couple gems, or several gems, and add those in the centre of each of the snowflakes. So I did go ahead and cut some of that out so you didn't have to watch me do the same thing over and over again. But once I had each of those snowflakes covered, I'm using some more glue to stick this panel to my card base. My card base is made from turquoise C and measures four and a quarter by four and a quarter. I really love how this turned out. I love getting to be able to use the wreath builder with all different stamp sets to see what I can create. So for this card, I'm using another one of the background stamps. This time it is a snowflake background, and I'm going to stamp that on a card panel that measures four and a quarter by five and a half, and then also on the inside of a note card. I'm going to be cutting an aperture in the front of my note card, and I wanted the background to have some interest and some kind of a design, and this one isn't too overwhelming, so you could certainly still write a message on the inside of this card also. To cut my aperture I'm going to be using a circle and I'll tape that in place and run it through my die cut machine on the panel and then I'll also line that up in the exact same spot using this panel to help me so I can line that up onto my card base making sure to open this up so I don't cut through both layers or I don't mark both layers. This die certainly wouldn't be thick enough to cut through all of those layers but I'll open that up when I run it through my die cut machine and then I'll be left with a perfect circle that lines up on both my panel and my card base. So for this I am going to be creating a spinner card and the item that's going to spin will be this snowflake here. You can create spinner cards using any item that is symmetrical so you can have an image at the front and an image at the back or you could certainly use something that's that isn't symmetrical, you would just have to have a plain white piece on the back or do some mirror image stamping to help you along. I stamped down two of those snowflakes and then I'll use the die just to go ahead and cut those out. 
and I'll run each of those through my die cut machine so I have two perfect snowflakes. So the next thing that I'll need is some invisible sp invisible spread, invisible thread, and it's perfect for creating these spinner cards because it hides that element that will help this suspend on the front of the card and enable it to spin around. So I've added adhesive all over the back of each of these snowflakes, and you can't really see it here, but I'm stretching a piece of that invisible thread. You could also use fishing twine or whatever you have to hand. I just have a roll of this uh, invisible thread, which was inexpensive, so I think it works great for projects like this. And you can see here now when I hold the edges, it is there. It's very difficult to see on camera and in person, but it's certainly there. So I'm stretching this inside of the window and you want to make sure to stick this down really well and you want to make sure to stretch it as you stick because you don't want it to be too loose and kind of floppy in this window and you want it to hold your snowflake upright. I use some double sided sticky tape to stick the thread down and I will peel off that backing to sandwich this in place and I'm just adding some extra adhesive around the outside edges of my card. Once I peel off those backings, I'll go ahead and lay this panel on top and that will just hide all of those pieces inside and make sure that that invisible thread can't move around. I'll trim off the excess and then my spinner is ready to go. Anytime that you use this, you want to kind of pre-wind your snowflake by spinning it around several times and then when you open it up, it will spin around. So I forgot to stamp my sentiment before doing all of this, so I'll go ahead and add this into my Misty. I shouldn't have any problems stamping it down because everything is nice and flat, but it is nice to be able to have the comfort of using the Misty so if you do mess it up, you can re-stamp. Naturally, whenever I create a card like this, I will play with it for quite a while, whether it's a shaker or a spinner, so I did that for a while and then moved on to the next card. This is a really simple card design which would be, again, great for mass producing, and I'll show you the stamping first. So I mounted my stamp inside my Misty and I'm just going to ink that up using some green. I have a white piece of paper underneath because at first I thought I was going to use multiple colours on this stamp and then I realised that I didn't need to because I was worried that I would accidentally stamp the holly in green but this has already been thought about and the holly doesn't stamp in green. So I'll flip that piece round and then stamp again and then I have two kind of perfectly aligned pieces of holly sprigs that I'll be able to go ahead and colour in the actual berries and I'm going to be colouring those in red, so I of course stamped my sentiment in red to match, and it reads, Blessed is the season which engages the whole world in a conspiracy of love, which I think is just beautiful. I just used an alcohol marker to add a small dot of colour on each of those berries. I made sure to use a colour that would match with my red velvet cardstock and my red velvet ink. The panel that I have here is a beautiful lime colour. This is the Jelly Bean Green. I really like this colour, so I wanted to make sure that I used it on this simple design. And I'm using it to mat the outside and also the inside of this card. Because it is a simple card design, I think it's really nice to have the matting mirror on the inside and the outside. And it just helps to add something extra special to this when you've got a really clean and simple design. On top of the Jelly Bean colour, I'm adding some white cardstock that's cut to be slightly smaller and that will give me a spot to write my sentiment or to write my message on the inside. And then I'll do the same thing on the outside, I'll add my white stamped panel. I think it's nice to have a card design like this kind of at your disposal, and you can mix this up with different colours and different stamps and different sentiments, but it really helps when you're in a pinch and need to create a card quickly, just to have a nice simple design in mind such as this one. Okay, on to the next card. I'm going to be doing some heat embossing on black. So I'm lining my stamp up in my Misty and I'm using a grid template just to help me line this up exactly where I want it. And I have my cardstock in the middle of the Misty because I'll be stamping three times and I wanted to be able to move my cardstock left to right without having to realign my stamp. I've covered the entire piece with the anti-static powder tool and because I nudged it out the way, I'm just double checking my positioning using that grid template. And then I'll go ahead and stamp this down using some Versamark clear sticky ink. And then I'll move my cardstock over to the right, double check the alignment, I'll notice that it's slightly off. <laughs> I'll go ahead and fix that, and then I'll ink up the stamp and stamp it down. I'm going to be using the Love From Lizzie Silver Dollar Embossing Powder. This is one of my favourite silver embossing powders, or 
it is my my favourite silver embossing powder of the ones that I've used so far. This one gives off a really nice bright silver colour and I think it adds a really nice contrast to the black. So I'll go ahead and pour all of that over my snowflakes and tap off any of the excess and just funnel the rest back into the jar. And then I'll go ahead and heat set that. Heat embossing is one of the first techniques that really drew me into card making. I saw somebody stamp down it was a teddy bear and they covered it in gold embossing powder and then heat set it and there's something very special about when you see heat embossing powder melt the very first time. I think it's kind of magical the way you see it change from a powder to that really glossy high shine. So I was definitely hooked on heat embossing and knew I had to get a heat tool straight away so I could do the same thing. Here I've stamped down my sentiment and then just added some more of that silver dollar embossing powder and used my heat gun to set that. You'll notice that the black cardstock looks very powdery. Some of that anti-static powder tool is still on the background, but it's no problem. Once I'm happy with everything, you can go ahead and use a microfiber cloth just to buff off any of that excess powder. Here I'm using my corner chomper just to round the bottom two corners of this piece and I'll go ahead and add some adhesive and stick this down onto a white card base. Again, this is another really quick and easy card, but I think it's so effective with the black, the white, and then that shine from the silver. Once I've got that perfectly in place, I'll just use my corner chomper again just to round those same two corners so the design is consistent. Of course, I couldn't finish this super shiny card without a little more bling, so I added three more gems, again, each in the centre of the snowflakes. And I just love the shine that that silver embossing powder gives off. Okay, so moving into card nine. For this card, I knew I wanted to have the sentiment stretched across the centre of my card panel. So I just used some temporary adhesive to pr put that in place, so I knew exactly where to add my stamping. I wanted to repeat stamp this poncetta flower using the red velvet ink along the bottom and then again at the top of this card. You could of course use your Misty to do this, but I decided to freehand it this time and I believe I twisted the stamp a little bit so the image is slightly different on the top to the bottom, but if you wanted to keep everything perfectly symmetrical you certainly could do so using your Misty or just being conscious of your stamp orientation if you use a stamp block. So I peeled up that green piece and just wiped away any of that temporary adhesive and then I'll stamp down my sentiment in the centre of this piece and then I'm just using some brown ink from my craft room to stamp down these adorable pine cones. I really love these pine cones and they are certainly going to make their way into a wreath at some point, whether or not it will be in a video or just something that I make for myself, I'm definitely going to add those pine cones to a wreath at some point. We couldn't finish without having a little bit more foam, so I'm using some Scotch 3M foam tape and I'm just adding that to the back of this piece, trimming it down where necessary to make sure it fits to give nice even dimension along the back of this panel. Even that tiny little square over on the side where I mismeasured my second piece and then I'll peel off all the backings and go ahead and stretch that across the centre of the card. I really love how this one turned out. I'd love to know which of these cards is your favourite, so do let me know in the comments section below. So for my next card, my final card, this one is a bit of a throwback for me. This is inspired by the very first ever Gina K video or Stamp TV video that I watched. I can't remember when I watched it, it was uploaded several years ago and it has a wonderful technique for how to add glitter to a card without all of the mess and the chaos. <laughs> This was something that I'd searched for and I found Gina Kay's channel and since then I've been a fan of Gina Kay and Snap TV so I wanted to be able to provide some of a somewhat of a an honour to that video by recreating it using the same design but a different stamp set. So this design has a lot of beautiful layers of red and white. It's, it's very Christmassy. Gina used a Christmas, uh, Christmas tree stamp in her video and I'll make sure to have that linked in the description and she shared a wonderful technique where you can use embossing powder which is what I used first here for this snowflake and then you can add glitter on top 
and then reset your embossing powder and that glitter will sink into the embossing powder and it will trap the shine and it will enable you to have some beautiful glitter on your card without it coming off and without it rubbing away in the same way that it does when you use just glue. So I'm just trying to show you the shine there by using a different light. It's quite difficult to capture the glitter shine, but I, I promise you it is there and you can see it a little bit more clearly in the final video. So I'm starting my layering, I'm using a red panel and I added some white, then I have another red panel here and then I'll go ahead and add another white layer and then on top of that I will add my stamping. I followed the dimensions that are given in Gina's video and as I said I will link that in the description below so you can go and see Gina's version. She certainly did not mess up this piece here and have to perform some stamp surgery and tear it apart before she could stick it down on her final card. Once I've wiped away any of the excess glue that smushed out the sides, I'm realising that I've forgotten to stamp my sentiment. Again, another mistake that I don't think I've ever seen Gina make. <laughs> so I'm using a little bit more of my anti-static powder tool and then I'll ink up my sentiment with some Versamark and then we'll use that same detailed white embossing powder and I'll sprinkle that over the top of the sentiment and then heat set it. This is the exact same powder that Gina used in her video and I was inspired to buy it after watching her video on this technique. Once that's all turned glossy, this card is finished. So as I mentioned, this was how I was introduced to Gina K and I'd love to know what the first video that you saw using Gina K products or the first Stamp TV video that you saw was. So be sure to leave that in the comments below also. Okay, it's time for a recap. So first up was the snowflake stamping on the number 10 size cardstock. Then we had some prickly pear ink with some perfect pearls over the top and some apple stamping. Then we trapped some multicoloured snowflakes using clear embossing powder and added black ink over the top to really make those pop. Next up is the white sheet music background stamp and the partridge, the pears and of course the sentiment and a partridge in a pear tree. Then I busted out my wreath builder because I knew I wanted to make a snowflake wreath and I made a smaller card for this one which measures four and a quarter by four and a quarter. Here we have my snowflake spinner card. It's so much fun to play with and I think it's a definitely a kind of wow factor card for somebody to receive. Then I have this clean and simple holly stamping which has got a little bit of extra wow factor because the layering on the outside is matched on the inside. Then here we have the silver embossing powder over the top of black. Then we've got the multiple stamping of the poncettas and those adorable little pine cones. And then, of course, we've got my Gina K inspired card, which was only fitting considering I'm using a Gina K kit. And this was the card or the YouTube video that introduced me to Gina in the first place. Thank you so much for sticking with me till the end of this video. I do hope you've enjoyed it. I'd love to hear from you in the comment section below to let me know which card is your favourite and also how you were introduced to Gina K or Stamp TV for the very first time. On screen right now I have a couple more videos I think you might enjoy. If you're new to my channel I'd love to have you subscribe. You can go ahead and click that logo on screen right now. That's all from me today. I'll see you again soon. Bye for now.